Hey, 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 happy Tuesday. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McLear, back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope. Presented to you by The Gaming Gang. Which I happen to be the Grand Poobah and uh, founder, editor-in-chief. So, uh, playing around with a little bit with the, uh, the audio levels tonight. Just because uh, I've got the mic a little bit closer to me. But uh, I want to try to keep it a little... See, because supposedly you're supposed to keep the mic like this. You're supposed to speak into the microphone like this. But uh, I don't like having the mic right in my face. So plus, you know, it's fine to talk like this when you're, you know, you're doing a podcast. But when you shoot video, a little tough to have the, uh, the pop filter you know, blocking you out. So anyway, welcome aboard. Tonight is Tuesday, August 27th. This is episode 352 of the Daily Dope. Tonight, I am going to unbox and take a first look at Anomaly from Starling Games. That's right. This was uh, this came out at Gen Con. I do not believe it's in stores. I'm I'm 99.9% positive that it is not in stores just yet yet but we are going to take a first look and see what's cooking so do want to mention if this is the first time you've actually watched the show this is a live stream it's very very casual it's uh it's not rocket surgery as i like to say i simply kick back talk about uh usually some tabletop gaming news do a game unboxing like tonight or maybe i'll do a review or page through some rpg books what have you but it's all just kicking back having a good time because this is a live stream, if you are watching live, chat is available on YouTube. It's not on screen. It's one of the ways that I keep some of these stranger commenters at bay, but I do pay attention to chat. So if you like to say howdy, or maybe you've got a question, or maybe there's something about anomaly you'd like to get a closer look at or have a question about, fire away and I will respond. Just chime in. As I mentioned, I do pay attention to the chat. Of course, if you like the video, please give it a quick thumbs up. If you check out some of the videos on the Gaming Gang channel and you dig them, by all means, please subscribe. And if you do, don't forget, ring that little bell because it will not only notify you of when I upload new videos, because sometimes... I do other videos than just live streams. Actually, I do that quite often. I shouldn't say sometimes. I do it a lot. But it will also inform you of when the stream goes live within about five minutes or so. All right. So, moon right along. Let's uh, let's take a peek to see what's going on here. Strangely enough, uh, don't see anybody in chat. So I'm just taking a quick peek to make sure that this is actually streaming live. It is streaming live. We're okay. Because uh, you never know. Because YouTube loves to change my stream key on me without telling me. And then I start doing a show. And uh, nobody's in chat. And I'm like, huh. What the hell's going on? Because there's usually people in chat. Anyway, I'm going to jump into the tabletop gaming news. Um, I do have... Actually... Uh, yeah, everything's set up. Oh, actually, no, it's not. I need to pull up. I forgot all about it. I got this last minute, so uh, I will be jumping into the news. Actually, I'm going to be talking about Carolina game tables in just. All right, there we go. Sorry about that, gang. Uh, 
Things have been hectic. It's just been another hectic day here in the duct tape studios, running around a lot. But that's okay. Everything's cool. So, Carolina Game Tables have launched their latest Kickstarter to bring a new sized table to market. And here's the dope. This newest design is called the 5x5 because the overall dimensions are 5 feet square. When the dining top is in place, one seam at the 2.5 foot mark divides the table like a normal table leaf. The 5x5 as a dining table is strong enough to stand up to everyday use for eating, homework, craft projects, and everything else a normal family uses the central household table for. So there's a lot of things. When you're ready to play a game, simply remove the dining top to reveal a 38 by 38 square play area. The depth of the play area is 3 inches, like all our dining height designs. Cup holders are an add-on option and may be purchased as a set of four, one at each corner of the table for $100, for a set of eight for $200. The play area of each Carolina game table is covered in commercial grade velveteen. What are they uh, have to, to uh, skin velveteen rabbits for that? This fabric is rip stain and fade resistant and is the kind preferred by hotel lobbies and bars for upholstery. The fabric is wrapped around plywood then bolted up into the table frame. The factory even veneers the plywood with mahogany so the underneath of the table looks nice. The play area's plywood is not obstructed by the table legs and is intended to be replaced eventually. There is a short Kickstarter video. It's a little less than two minutes long. Let's check it out from Carolina Game Tables. The 5x5 five five can be reserved through Kickstarter for $1,699. That is through September 23rd. Expected delivery of this Kickstarter size table is May of next year. So pretty interesting. Uh, Carolina Game Tables is actually run by the same folks, uh, Clint and Jody Black, who run Pinnacle entertainment so they're behind savage worlds that's why we saw them playing savage worlds at the table so anyway well that's kind of cool uh yeah i uh, didn't have the video set up but i was like well talking about this kickstarter i prefer to share the video as well moving right along capstone games has a board game based on chinese legend and i've got the dope on a race for the chinese zodiac Legend has it, long ago, humankind was ignorant in knowing how to tell the years apart. The Jade Emperor decided to help out by holding a race involving all the animals on his birthday. The first 12 animals across the river and reach the Heavenly Palace will have a year named after them. 
the race became known as the Great Race, and the 12-year cycle was named the Chinese Zodiac. Race for the Chinese Zodiac is a board game that recreates the Great Race. Pick your favorite animal and race with other animals. Earn karma and gather energy during the race. Put these to good use and take desired actions to race ahead of other animals. But be aware, the other animals are plotting to do the same. Outwit them and earn extra movements at their expense. Get out foxed and lose valuable movement to them instead. The first animal to complete the race earns the coveted right of having the first year of the Chinese Zodiac named after it. Race for the Chinese Zodiac is for three to five players. Ages eight and up, plays in 40 to 70 minutes, and will carry an MSRP of $39 and 99 cents when it arrives on September 18th. This could be a lot of fun uh, as far as uh, a dozen animals racing, but it's only up to five people. I wonder if there's rules in the game, kind of like uh, like an AI to uh, to provide the other animals with, uh, with a chance in the race. I mean, otherwise it'd be kind of silly. They have like, you know, three people racing three animals and it's supposed to be for the Chinese Zodiac, right? So, there you have it. And Exolera X1 has arrived in chat. I was going to say, it was kind of strange. Didn't have anybody in chat for a while. Usually, uh, people are hanging out before the show even starts. All right, on to the next news piece. Asmodee has a solitaire Lovecraftian card game. It's arriving next month. And I've got the dope on Arkham Noir Case 1, The Witch Cult murders. <laughs> well, Pergus Knight, Maze Eve, is always a nightmare in witch-haunted Arkham. There are bad doings, and a child or two frequently goes missing. This year, Miskatonic University students engaged in occult studies have been turning up dead. Arkham police, in deference to your unusual expertise, have asked for your help to get to the root of the matter. Time is of the essence, because after a will purchase... The trail will grow cold, and the culprits will retreat to the shadows until the next witch's sabbat, when the next cycle of deaths will begin. As private investigator Howard Lovecraft, you will investigate events based on the stories, the dreams in the witch house, the thing on the doorstep, and the unnameable. Mm -hmm. Arkham Noir is a solitaire card game inspired by the interconnected stories of H.P. Lovecraft and other authors reimagined as noir detective stories. Each case stands alone, just like the cheese. Gameplay consists of adding cards to open cases, creating lines of investigation in an effort to solve them. The ultimate goal is to score five puzzle clue cards in order to piece together the big picture before running out of time or mental stability. Each newly shuffled deck is the start of a new unique challenge with adjustable difficulty levels to accommodate all levels of players. Arkham Noir, case number one, is for a single player, ages 14 and up, plays in around 30 minutes and will carry an MSRP of $19.99 when it hits stores next month. There are three cases. I believe all three are arriving at the same time. And interestingly enough, the game is already out in a lot of places around the world, except for the United States, including Japan. And I was like, wow, really? I'm kind of surprised. It's not a Japanese game. So I'm surprised it's actually hitting in Japan before it hits in North America. Paul Nolan is also jumping in to chat. Good to see you, Paul. Thanks for popping in to catch the show tonight. My next piece... Uh, yesterday, I did talk about the passing of Flying Buffalo Games' own Rick Loomis. And I have to say, sorry to hear, the Loomis family faces some massive medical bills. So, there is actually a GoFundMe going on right now, but Bundle of Holding has also decided they are going to lend a hand with a new bundle of Buffalo's Catalyst series of PDFs these were systemless role-playing books, and except for one of the items, two of the items, I should say, are actually role-playing games. So, anyway, here's the news. 
Adventurer. In a good cause, we've revived our July 2017 Catalyst Bundle, featuring the Catalyst line in other tabletop fantasy role-playing games. In PDF from Flying Buffalo. The late Rick Loomis, founder of Flying Buffalo, publisher of Tunnels and Trolls, and designer of the first ever solitaire adventure, Buffalo Castle, passed away Friday, August 23rd, one day short of his 73rd birthday after a struggle with lymphatic cancer. Facing overwhelming medical bills, Rick's family has started, as I mentioned, a GoFundMe campaign, and Bundle of Holding is also helping with this great collection of Buffalo's Catalyst supplements that work with any fantasy RPG. Notably, the City Book series presents dozens of individual shops, establishments, and characters you can add to any urban fantasy adventure. This revised collection brings you all seven City Books, four Grimtooth's Trap collections of devious dungeon obstacles, and the RPG Mercenary Spies and Private Eyes. For this resurrection, we've added a recent catalyst titled The City of the Gods Map Pack and the solo adventure Mugshots No. 1, the case of the Pacific Clipper. And if you bought this offer during its original July 2017 run, check your wizard's cabinet because you get both of these new additions also. For just $7.95, you'll get all six titles in the starter collection as PDFs, including the first three city books, Butcher Baker Candlestick Maker, Porticall, and Deadly Nightside, plus the first two Grim Tooth's books and Treasure Vault. If you pay more than the threshold price of $23.14, you'll level up and also get the entire bonus collection with 10 more titles worth an additional $49. You'll get City Books 4 through 7. Four more sets of people and places you can easily drop into any city adventure. You've got On the Road, Sideshow, Uptown, and King's River Bridge. You also get Grimtooth's Traps 3 and 4, titled 4 and 8. I have no idea why. These two books give you hundreds more traps to waylay dungeon delvers. And new in this revival is the City of the Gods map pack, the wondrous place built by all the pantheons of Earth after they left this world behind. Mercenary Spies and Private Eyes, happens to be Michael Stackpole's classic action espionage RPG inspired by Tunnels and Trolls. It includes the adventure of the Jade Jaguar, Jaguar, I should say, solo adventure. Both were also part of the September 2018 Tunnels and Trolls bundle. Plus, there's the new Mugshots number one, the case of the Pacific Clipper, a high-flying pulp era solo adventure for mercenary spies and private eyes, written by... D&D co-designer Dave Arneson. So this is a really good way for you to uh, help the Loomis family and get your hands on some awesome RPG PDFs. I had Mercenary Spies and Private Eyes. I've had hundreds of RPGs over the years. And uh, I do recall it was a pretty, pretty interesting system. And it was uh, very easy to get into. Just like Tunnels and Trolls. Tunnels and Trolls is one of the easier fantasy role-playing games to sit down and get to learn. I should say, one of the easier, kind of crunchy role-playing games. Because there's some RPGs out there that are just on an index card. Kabuki Kid is in, and so is Fleming here on. Good to see everybody showing up. I was a little worried a few minutes in. I thought, wow, jeez. Nobody's coming to show up today. It's like, okay, that's bad. It's been a long time since they did a live show without anybody hanging out in the chat. So good to see everybody popping by. My final news piece, <clears throat> if you happen to be a game master and you specialize in fantasy fair, you may be interested in a new PDF from DiceGeeks.com. I've got the dope on the book. <clears throat> Excuse me. Need to get a sip here. Wow. Also, Pretty dry down here in the duct tape studios tonight. It was very humid yesterday. Today it's very dusty. Don't know why. Kabuki Kid says uh, that they have some of the old Grim Tooth trap books and that they're fun reads. Yeah, I, they are. They are pretty funny. Uh, the first few were way uh, more interesting 
than the last few. Uh, Rick Loomis is, uh, I'm sorry, Kabuki Kid's talking about Rick Loomis just passed away. That's why I'm talking about, I mentioned that on yesterday's show, and this bundle of holding is to help pay for some of the medical expenses. So this is to help Rick Loomis' family, uh, you know, help them out in a little bit. So uh, Kabuki Kid probably popped in after I had kind of prefaced the bundle of holding. So anyway, on to the uh, uh, Dice Geeks. The Book of Random, Random Tables Quests is what I'm talking about here. Need adventure ideas for Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder? Or could it be any other fantasy role playing? Cut down your GM prep with 1,000 quest options. This book is a collection of quests or adventure ideas for the use in fantasy tabletop role-playing games. The ideas are organized by a broad topic and are placed in a random table format. Each table has 100 ideas. You can use these adventure ideas to run RPG sessions in several ways. You can read through the tables and choose an idea. You can take several ideas and combine them into one scenario for a campaign. Or you can also roll randomly on a table to find an adventure on the fly. You can also use these ideas as side quests within original or pre-made campaign. The first six tables contain ideas that range from story hooks to scenarios to globe-spanning adventures. These tables are organized under the topics Dungeon Hooks, Royal Quests, Forest Quests, Doorways to Another World, Town Quests, and you guessed it, Sea Quests which uh, that was kind of a goofy show. The next three tables are as follows. Questing beasts, quest objects, and lost cities. Here you'll find the name of the thing and a bit of context. These are meant to be used as the goal of the quest. However, the goal is up to the game master. Meta quest is the last table in the book. It's a list of simple ideas that can be used as micro quests, much like collecting feathers in Angry Birds or bobbleheads in the Fallout video game. Currently, you can score this 81-page PDF for a cool $2.99 over at Drive Through RPG. Sweet, pretty cool. One thing I, I am kind of curious about because it's not something that I do. I know a lot of other game masters out there do this, but uh, I do not. I do not utilize a lot of random tables in my gaming. Uh, I usually have some some like plot points and things like that, some situations that I'm going to toss the players into and see how they react to it. But uh, never been one for a lot of random encounters and things like that because, and especially you know, creating adventures or coming up with, you know, adventure hooks, like rolling on a table. No, I would never do that. Then again, this book does sound kind of cool. So, uh, I could always check out the tables and uh, not necessarily rolling on them to get ideas. But as I mentioned, you can get this for $2.99 over at DriveThruRPG, the Gaming Gang, and thus the Daily Dope are affiliates of the One Bookshelf sites. So if you are going to swing over to DriveThruRPG, please stop by thegaminggang.com first, click on one of our banners, and of course, if you do make a purchase, get a little portion of that sale and it all adds up really helps out so all right cool deal uh moving right along wanted to uh talk about make sure everything's all set up here wanted to uh talk about what's uh what's coming up on shows the rest of the week and then on monday so tomorrow is war game wednesday i will be unboxing and taking a look at ancient civilizations of the inner sea this is a kind of low complexity ancients game from gmt games my pals over there it's supposed to be for like six players up to six players i believe pretty interesting plus i'm a big fan of ancient civilization so i'm looking forward to checking this out there's a show I'm gonna do a double dip of city of mist we're going to oh well that's okay I was going to say, I usually have the player's guide first, but we're going to actually sit back and take a first look and face through the Master of Ceremonies toolkit, as well as the player's guide for City of Mist. I have heard really good things about City of Mist. 
So I am looking forward to that. And on Friday, I will be reviewing Imhotep the Duel, which is from Cosmos. This was another one of their Gen Con releases. It's kind of a kind of a two-player version of Imhotep. And on Monday's show, I will be reviewing Valparaiso from Stronghold Games. So got uh, got some some reviews coming up. I've got some unboxings and that. That's how I like to mix things. I like to keep things mixed up. I, I originally had this week going to be like all reviews, and I was like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I want to do every show a review. Because those shows tend to be pretty long. Anyway, just uh, wanted to talk about the two contests that are currently going on, because one of them, we did actually reach the 65 new subscribers beyond 1,600. So there will be at least one of the Pathfinder PDF package giveaways, which include the second edition Pathfinder core rulebook, the bestiary, as well as the fall of plague stone PDFs. Really easy to get in the running. All you have to do is be a subscriber to the YouTube channel and you're in the running. Uh, we are, I believe two subscribers beyond. So it's at 1667. I'd love to give more of these out, but time is running out. The contest only runs until September 5th, and I will announce the winner or winners on September 6th. Then I have a contest going on for Twitter followers. This one, you actually have to do something to get into the running, but it's for Twitter followers, and you should own the game Everdell, <laughs> from Starling Games to enjoy this because I am going to be giving away a copy of the Everdell Ever Tree. It is the wooden tree. Ho, ho, ho. As well as the collector's edition of Pearlbrook, the first expansion for Everdell, which I will have a review of probably next week. Maybe a week from Friday. So, uh, yeah, so you can get both of these. We're getting close. So I have to get to 5,100 subscribers, or not subscribers, followers, I should say, on Twitter. And I have a tweet that I keep popping out there. It's usually at night, but I do a retweet for this. And it's simply talking about the contest. It's a picture. It's talking about the contest. And it just tells you all you got to do is be a follower, retweet that tweet, and tell me what is it about Everdell you really like. Pretty simple. Uh, I believe I'm like 102 followers away. That contest is going to run through September 8th, and I will announce the winner. Hopefully, I'll be announcing a winner on September 9th. Do you have to be a uh, citizen of the U.S. or Canada or uh, to be in the running? Because uh, Or at least have... I can ship it to an address in the U.S. or Canada because uh, I'm on the hook for the shipping for that. Anyway, so uh, one contest. We know we are giving away a prize pack, so that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, tell friends, you know, you know, if you got friends who, you know, don't watch the show or have never visited thegaminggang.com, by all means, let them know. Tell them, hey, subscribe. Because, you know, the more subscribers, the better your chances of winning. So, especially when I'm giving away multiple copies of stuff. All right, so that is what we've got cooking. One last thing before we jump into the unboxing. I do want to point out that the gaming gang and thus the Daily Dope are pretty much not-for-profit endeavors. So you know what's coming. It's time to hear from Lil Wizbub. Of course, we're not really going to hear from Lil Wizbub. I'm going to be talking... But I am going to be talking about Lil Bub's Big Fund and the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. If you like the show, if you like the website, if you like the channel, please consider making a small donation to Lil Bub's Big Fund and the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. This fund does provide grant monies to organizations who care for special needs animals for awaiting adoption. These animals could um, could be 
blind, they could be deaf, they could require medications, they could have mobility issues, they could, say for an example, have feline leukemia, or they might just be a little bit older. Regardless, these animals still deserve to find loving homes, and that's what Lil Bub's Big Fund is all about. Of course, I don't know if anybody heard this, but Pinky came down here and she's started making her uh, presence known. Just in time for a little bub, huh? Anyway, like I like to uh, point out is that uh, if uh, if you like the websites, if you like the show, eh, make a little donation. And if you do, shoot me an email. My email address is down in the corner there. It's Jeff MacLear at thegaminggang.com. Ah, so there you go. All right. So the mic might not be picking up Pinky because I've been playing around with the audio as well. So fingers crossed. She is making quite a bit of noise. All right, let's move on because I'm sure folks are tuning in because they want to check out Anomaly from Starling Games. It's designed by, and I am going to get this name so wrong, Thomas Dejani De Les Frons. That's my guess. With artwork provided by Stephen Hamilton, Dan May, and Greg May. Game is for two to four players, ages 14 and up. Plays in 30 to 60 minutes. Should be carrying an MSRP of around $39.99 when it arrives this fall. I am not positive on that MSRP, nor do I have a release date just yet. All I know is it will be out in the fall. So Kabuki Kid says, hey, time to feed my kitties, in fact. There you go. Pinky came down to remind you to feed the cats. <laughs> Anywho. All right, let's move on over to the other camera. So I've got this set up. I'm going to take the shrink wrap off of here. I am still playing around with the lighting. So not sure uh, how the lighting's looking. Should be pretty pretty good should be all right so it's uh just getting some shadows and stuff that i didn't want so let's take a look here we'll flip over to the back it says anomaly is a fast-paced and suspense-filled game of hidden movement deduction and combat one player plays as the mysterious and deadly anomaly while the other players take on the roles of science students fighting for their lives to outwit and outlast it Play as the anomaly, evolve your powers, feed on your prey. Ooh, play as the students, run, hide, fight, survive together. Hey, well, run, fight, or die, right? I just, uh, just reviewed Run, Fight, or Die Reloaded last night, so pretty cool. All right, let's see what we've got. I'm going to pop my reading glasses on here as well. So let's see what's cooking. So we got a bunch of baggies. We've got uh, little standees. These are like, uh, we'll take a closer look. We'll zoom in on this stuff too. So these are gray. I'm gonna take a guess these might represent the anomaly. But well, we've got some metal coins with like claw marks on it. That's pretty wild. We got a little, little pack of cards. Another deck of cards here. Player screens. The Starling Games catalog for this year. So we've got the rules. Ah, so we've got the rules in English and French, it looks like. Looks like this might be Francais. I'm not positive. I don't speak French. I took one year of French in high school, and all I can remember is uh, how to ask, where's the airplane? That's pretty much, well, and I, you know, mother, father, brother, sister. That's about it. Yeah, looks like that's French. So we'll put that off to the side got these standees here then we've got uh so we've got some more stands so we've got that we've got this some discs we got this board here that unfolds out into a circular board and looks like we've got a couple of punch boards so first off let's move some of this stuff out of the way and we will take a quick look at the rules the rule book looks like it's pretty short. All 
Okay. And let's zoom on in. Yeah, there we go. All right, so uh, intro. One thing I should point out, uh, the game is called Anomaly, but when it was originally up on Kickstarter, I believe, if I remember correctly, I believe it was something like, um, something, it was something zero. I'm trying to remember what it was, uh, yeah, it, it was some, uh, no, I was going to say input zero, but no, it's not. It was something zero, and for some strange reason, the, the title they gave it just wasn't really creating a lot of interest. So they actually pulled it off. They canceled that Kickstarter and just retitled it, changed up some of the uh, stretch goals, and then put it back on Kickstarter, and it was fine. It funded perfectly. So, All right, so we're talking about the setup. Okay, so these are supposed to be shuttle bays. All right, those openings in the board. Talking about the game structure. So you've got the, uh, it says the game's divided into rounds, starting with the students. Each team plays in turn, meaning a student plays, the anomaly plays. A student plays, the anomaly plays, etc. Talking about the students and the anomaly and the end of the round. Oh, we got to worry about radiation, too. Uh, ah. My understanding is that um, there's a deck of cards for both the students as well as the anomaly. And say, for an example, if the students use it's they're like dual, dual cards. So they have an action for the students, or they have an ability for the students. They also have an ability for the anomaly, or like I said, action, what have you. We'll see it in in a bit. So my understanding is that um, if the students use the action, then the anomaly gets that card and they get to actually kind of like evolve and they learn that other new thing. So we got basic actions for the anomaly, special actions for the anomaly, evolutions for the anomaly, okay. Strategy tips and an advanced two player variant. I would think you probably need, this game's probably gonna play better or best with the full complement of four players. So where? Oh, there's the end of the game. I was gonna say, where's the end of the game? Where's, where's? How do you win? The game ends as soon as either the students or the anomaly's health marker hits the zero marker. So there you have it. All right. So, twelve pages of rules. Pretty simple. Looks pretty simple to jump right on into. So we got the rules there. Let's open up this board. So that is uh that's like half of the board here. So it folds out into a circular area. Uh I'm not gonna zoom back out because we're gonna be looking at some cards and stuff so, and, and tokens and that. So these are supposed to be shuttle bays. So and then these are different areas of the scientific station. So we've got that. Then we've got these standees. Just like so. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. So we can get a closer look at this. I'm going to actually put the board away. I don't really think we need to leave this out. Or I can kind of like leave. Nah, I'll just put it off to the side. Give you a better chance. Uh, be easier for you to actually see the cards and these little standees and stuff. Let me grab a quick sip here. So we've got a bunch of these gray ones. So I'm taking a wild stab that this is probably representing the anomaly, like uh, where it could be is my guess. Because then we have some others. There are fewer of these, and they are three different colors, which of course are going to correspond with three different students. So we've got these, and there's a few of these. So 
Maybe that's to mark where the students could be. I don't know. We got those. We have these discs. So I think there's three or four of them. Let's open this up. Well, if this ends up having, uh, the MSRP, I believe, is running somewhere between like 40 and 50. I was peeking around. I was looking at distribution sites, things like that. Nobody had any info on the price so uh so yeah so actually it looks like these these discs here actually correspond with the board so i'm taking a stab that you're going to use your you're going to be using your player screen and i'm going to open these up to block these out so here we go here's one of the students play your screen so i'm guessing we have evolutions student actions but i'm taking a guess you're going to use your screen and you're going to be plotting maybe where you're maybe these are used to plot on here that's a possibility so we've got four of these so each of the players will have one of those and uh these are like a, a card stock, but they have a finish on it. So there's like a plastic coating on it. So these should hold up to repeated play pretty well. So we've got, there's, here's one of the students right here. And we've got another student. And then we've got the third student. And then this is, uh, no doubt, this is the anomaly. <laughs> so... And, uh, yep, because here we have the anomaly special actions that are available to it. All right, so we've got these four player screens. Let's take a peek at the cards here. So we've got two decks of cards. One's really small. This is a really small deck. This is like uh, a European card size. Euro game card size. Let's see what we got. Uh, are these supposed to be like items or something? Okay, so we've got different backing. So we got that, this. I wonder if these are items that you can find in the different areas of the science station. That'd be my guess. And then are these just no? These are all different too. Looks like we've got three of each symbol. So we show, I guess, that shows a bed. So maybe that's students get to rest. It shows almost like a control area, control consoles and stuff like that. Uh, it's like a power, power supply. Looks like, I don't know, radiation. Big thing of Mountain Dew. So Flaming Heron says, so the students are all the same special rules, except Sutra and the Anomaly is the only one who is different. I believe so. I believe that is the case. I believe the students all share the same sort of actions, except for, of course, these cards here. It looks like that's uh, almost like Geiger. wrench spanner as uh folks in the uk like to say uh some sort of like tablet it's my ipad 47 so uh looks like this is just liquid leaking and what are we gonna see here a fire because we got a flame on it sure enough so we got flames so these are the little smaller cards. Okay, let's see what we've got with this deck. Let's see if... Yep, these things never work. These little tabs... Well, I shouldn't say never. 
little pull tabs on these decks of cards for most companies just never really work. It's just easier for me to take my hobby knife. So it says, uh, explore everything, be anything, fear nothing. Join us at the Tor Ice Institute. Yay. These are all the same. Yep. Okay, so it's one deck here. All have the same backing. So here's what I'm talking about where it's broken down into the card. If the students use it, then the anomaly gets the card. So for an example, this looks like this is some sort of a weapon. If they utilize this, then the alien's going to be able to get this, which looks like it's able to cocoon itself. So we see we've got a few different results here. So we've got a few of these where it's a weapon. Oh, there's a lot of them with a weapon. And then there's a trap. Quite a few traps. So looks like so far we see there's like four things for the alien. This cocoon thing, this like, like, I don't know, like radioactive figure. And the lightning bolt. I guess there's only, so far we, there's only three things. I got the lightning bolt. And then there's like a jury rigged weapon. Jury rigged uh, melee weapon here. Oh, there's something new for the. Let's see, let's see. There we go. Uh, I'm trying to keep the glare off. Uh, there's something new for the anomaly. Got another weapon here. Looks like we've got the. It seems like it's like all weapons for the students. Oh, that's something different that the anomaly can do over here. So, looks like a tracking device of some sort that the students can bust out. Uh, some sort of poison, maybe? Or, uh, actually, I think that's a health. I think that's like a health potion almost. All right, so uh, I blow somebody up. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Just uh, somebody's hand laying there. Oh, and then we've got like some big like, jeez, power stick. The whoop on him, whoop on the anomaly. So those are the decks of cards. We've got these standees here. Uh, let me show you these coins that have, and I'm taking a guess, maybe these are to track your health for the students, because there's three of them. So we have this side like this, and then we flip it over, and we see a side that's got kind of like, like claw marks that are torn into the coin. That's kind of cool. And it's uh, metal, it's not, Plastic with like a metallic finish to it. They're actually metal. And then uh, we also have some stands, which it looks like we've got some standees, some uh, cardboard standees that we'll use these for. So I'm going to zoom back out a little bit so we can take a look at these uh, punch boards because we've got two of them in here. Kind of, kind of interesting because as I'm looking through this, this is a game. Normally, when I do an unboxing and I'm checking out a game, I can get a pretty good feel for you know how how you play it, you know, what's going on in it. This, I'll be the first to admit, I, I don't know. I mean, I really don't know. Only thing I really know is that you've got the thing where if the students use one type of action or you know one of these cards that the alien gets the card to be able to use the thing that's on the other side. So that's basically all I really know about this. 
outside of a dangerous anomaly. So uh, we've got the uh, the two different punch boards. So artwork's pretty cool. So here we've got the traps. Looks like we got the traps here. That looks like almost looks like that's uh, something that the anomaly gets to do. Yeah, because here's another one for the anomaly. And they are dual sided. So this is like vortex looking thing here. If you flip it over, it's got like um different numbers throughout these, and I'm taking a wild stab that those correspond with this and with the board. I'm thinking. Right, so we've got that one, and then we've got this one here, which I'm taking a guess this is probably our health tracker. Because I believe it's the students are all considered like one group, so they share a, a an amount of health. And the anomaly, of course, has their own health. And then we've got these tokens down here. So, a lot of bags with this too. Not everything was in bags. That's pretty wild. All right, so we've got the, let's do it this way. We've got the game board. We've got the two decks of cards. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Uh, did it fit that way? There you go. So we've got those. We've got the two punch boards. We've got the four different player screens. We've got a bunch of these kind of like smoke colored standees, which I believe are supposed to be the anomaly or possible positions for the anomaly. We've got these three metal coins. We've got some colored standees, which should be for the students. Standees for the, the cardboard standees, as well as four of these discs, which looks like that's where we plot what we're doing during our turns, both for the students and the anomaly as well. And we've got the rules in, I believe, French and English. Plus some baggies and the Starling Games catalog for spring 2019. And that is what we find when we take everything from Anomaly outside the box. So I am going to have a review of Anomaly in the very near future. So, of course, by all means, stay tuned. So I will be checking that out. Looks, uh, looks like it could be kind of interesting. I, uh, I remember I played... Is it called Not Alone? It's from Stronghold Games. It's another like one versus many. And uh, the the alien has to kind of uh, guess where the uh, where the crash survivors from a spaceship are trying to go on the planet. So I had a good time with that. We uh, Elliot Miller, my best friend over at BoysandBee.com, he was playing the alien. The rest of us were all playing the survivors, and. Uh, I was just messing with Elliot's head. He couldn't figure out where the hell I was going. So, Because I would sit there and think, okay, he thinks I'm going to do this, so I'm going to do something completely different. And that's what I did. And he'd be like, I guess wrong. So anyway, so there you have it. As I mentioned, Anomaly, I don't believe is in stores yet. I think it's uh, it's coming out this fall, either like uh, late September, maybe early October. But it is for two to four players, ages 14 and up, and plays in about 30 to 60 minutes. All right, so on tomorrow's show, I will be unboxing and taking a first look at Ancient Civilizations of the Inner Sea from GMT Games. I'm looking forward to this one. It's pretty interesting. So it should have a pretty cool war game Wednesday ahead of us. All right, so as I'd like to point out, when you are not watching the Daily Dope, by all means, please visit GamingGang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. By now you know the drill. Get your geek on at GamingGang.com. Of course, if you like the video, give it a quick thumbs up. If you like the channel, please subscribe. 
and of course ring that bell so you get all of the notifications so i will be back tomorrow for everyone who joined me in chat tonight thank you very much for hanging out keeping me company first few minutes of the show i was really sitting there thinking wow i wonder if nobody's popping into chat tonight thankfully that was not the case but uh <clears throat> anyway and of course i'm sure there were some folks watching live who did not jump into chat and for those folks i have to say why not come on we don't bite we're pretty friendly and of course even if you watch after the fact i love you just as well as everyone else watching even if you're watching on memorex so until tomorrow everybody enjoy your monday nights i should say tuesday nights what am i thinking jeez see the the days all kind of run together well you can enjoy next monday's night anyway enjoy your tuesday night i will be back tomorrow and until then happy trails Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you liked this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here. And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again... Thanks for watching, and I'm Jeff McAleer.